evening, everyone. Um, I want to welcome everyone tonight to the Finance Committee meeting Thursday, May 13th. Uh, in accordance with Charles Baker, Governor Charles Baker, March 10, 2002, order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, the Finance Committee of the Quincy City Council will be convening via remote conferencing services that will air on QATV Channel 9, Government Access, on Thursday, May 13th at 7 p.m., relative to any and all matters pending in this committee, including but not limited to two items, 2021-029, the appropriation of $23 million for Quincy College Land Acquisition and Initial Design Services, 2021-030, Land Order of Taking, 1177 and 1227 Hancock Street. Also, pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. So good evening, everyone, to our second uh, meeting on, on the uh, $23 million um, bond for um, a new building here in the city of Quincy. Uh, before I get going, I just want to thank uh, President De Cristofaro and his staff for gathering up a lot of information. The councilors had a lot of questions the last time we were here, and they did a great job collecting a lot of information on the history of Quincy College and where they're heading to. I also want to thank Mr. Walker and the administration, too, on the city side for um, doing their uh, due diligence. Uh, last meeting, I took um, a lot of notes, as everyone did, and I want to try to run this if we can. And I know we will sh we will go away every once in a while to different questions, city and college. But we had plenty of questions on Quincy College itself, how it's doing, where it's been, where it's going. And then we have a lot of good information from Mr. Mason uh, in finance and director of public buildings, Paul Hines, in regards to projects to show everyone the activity going on in, in the city. Um, at this point, I'm going to recognize Councilor Palmucci. Um, the councilor uh, would like to make a few comments. Uh, thank you, Chairman McCarthy. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I, uh, I echo the, the, the thanks from um, the chair to everybody for uh, everybody for getting us all that information and working so hard on on following up. And, you know, there's nine of us. We, have a, we all have different ways of thinking and looking at things. We need different information. Um, I just wanted to start out tonight. I, I wanted to make a couple of comments just to um, kind of kick things off. I look forward to hearing the questions from my colleagues. I, I've really struggled with this bond request and, you know, where I stand on it. I've heard from folks, a lot of different folks in the community. Um, and really my, my colleagues um, in support and opposition of this have really raised great points that I've, that I've struggled with. Uh, and I, I think we all want the college to succeed. I don't think that's a question. Um, I know I certainly do. Uh, and I think we all can agree that it plays an important role in the community uh, and for many students. We know that community colleges offer educational opportunities to lower income folks that may not um, otherwise be available to them. Uh, and the college has always been a part of the discussions about the uh, Quincy Center revitalization. Every URDP discussion, every plan, every presentation that we've had um, has always included finding the college a permanent home in Quincy Square. Uh, and I still support that. I still, I, I still fundamentally support that, that notion. But I've been weighing that against uh, what will likely be a $100 million building at the taxpayer's expense uh, for what amounts to roughly 1,000 Quincy residents, uh, the enrollment, 19% you know, of enrollment at Quincy College. For me, that it just doesn't equate to being enough benefit for the residents to justify that kind of uh, investment. And not to mention that I think many of us, myself included, have a lot of remaining concerns about the college's finance 
uh, finances, the governance, and uh, quite frankly, about its uh, longevity. But I mean, I compare this. I compare this to development in general. Right? In order for development to be uh, successful, in order for development to work for a community, residents have to get a benefit, um, either by improved services, improved infrastructure, lower taxes, whatever it is. When people see housing going up all around them and their streets not getting paved, or they think the services are lacking, or their taxes are going up, they get frustrated. Where's the benefit for me? Um, and, and I see that in this discussion sort of as well, because uh, I'd like to see Quincy residents, more Quincy residents getting a benefit from Quincy College. Uh, I'd like to see uh, free tuition for any students who graduate from our high schools. And we offer it for you know the year after they graduate, free tuition. Uh, and for those residents who are uh, perhaps turning their life around uh, later in life by getting a GED, we offer folks that same free tuition. If you're a Quincy resident, you get a GED, you have a year, you can go to Quincy, you have a year to make a decision to go to Quincy College, and then the, the, the college is free for your, uh, for your time there. Uh, I mean, let's, let's make job training, we have an opportunity here, right? Make job training and college introductory, introduction courses uh, as accessible for residents as we do our public school system. I think our community would be better for it uh, to have Quincy College as an extension of our education system. Uh, and, and for those of you that, that don't know, I think many of the counselors do, that the college used to be governed by the elected school committee. Uh, I'd like to go back to it being directly overseen by the city in some capacity. I, I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm open to different possibilities, whether it's the school committee, whether it's uh, the mayor and it's more like a department, it's in the budget, things like that. But I think that's a discussion we should have. Um, but residents need to benefit from the college for me to consider having residents fit the bill for a new building. But I don't think that we're there yet on the college, but maybe we can get there in time. I'm, I, personally, I'm just, I'm not there yet. Um, and then on the other hand, though, I think purchasing the property in general is a good idea. People, I hear from people a lot when we're talking about downtown redevelopment um, and we're talking about uh, listing properties for takings and we're, we're um, uh, what's the thing we do when we move people? We pay, the, uh, pay a, a buttload of money to move a business from a location to another place. It, 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 it just doesn't make sense financially, right? Uh, people don't like that and, and I agree with them. Um, when we take things by eminent domain and force people to move, it doesn't work out well for us in the end. The property is available for sale. Now is the time to acquire it, not when someone else buys it. And then we decide we have a, a need for it. And then we end up you know, paying through the nose for it. Um, I think we can all agree that what's there now is not the best and highest use for that property. So I support, I want to be very clear, I support the expenditure of $23 million to purchase this property. Um, but I, I, I can't with the stated purpose of it being for the college at this point. I think that's a discussion we can have at a later point. Um, and now, whether it's for, whether we purchase the property and it ends up being for a municipal purpose, a college, or even if we sell it to a private developer um, that carries out the, the vision we have for, for Quincy Square, I don't see any risk in, this ac in that acquisition in and of itself. I mean, the property's on Hancock Street at a Butson MBTA station, uh, next to City Hall, the Adams Green. That land's not going to lose its value. And, I, and the reason why I asked um, to speak on this and, and, and I wanted to at the outset is because I don't want to vote no on this. I don't want to vote no on this measure because I'm not ready to make that commitment to Quincy College. Uh, I might be at some point. I'm not ready now. I'm not comfortable now with that. So. I'd like to separate the questions of purchase versus use. Right now, we're being asked to authorize $23 million uh, to acquire the land for a new Quincy College building. I'd like to separate that by removing the reference to the college from the bond authorization so that we can vote on the purchase. And, and if we do that, I think if we do that and we do pass it, um, even if we pass an amendment that, that I'm going to propose, we're telling the administration that we want to have more discussions about the use that 
not all of us are sold or a majority of us are sold, however it shakes out. Um, and I think that can happen. I think that we can go on and have those discussions. The, the property is available now. We should acquire the property now. Um, and we, we can have those discussions as we move forward after the acquisition before we uh, authorize any money for the building of the building. They're, they're, the administration is going to need to talk. To us. They can't, if we approve purchasing the, the, the building, we approve this bond authorization. They can't then build a building. They need to come back to us for an authorization um, uh, uh, for funding. And, and so we still have a seat at the table for discussing what goes there. You know, whether it's a college or something else, I don't know. Um, I'm prepared to have that discussion after we, after we buy the property. So what I'd like to do is, um, uh, Mr. Chair, is I'd like, I, I make a motion to amend Council Order 2021-029 by striking the words and initial design services for a new Quincy College building. So the be it ordained would, would then read, the amended version would then read, be it ordained that the city of Quincy appropriate the sum of $23 million for the purpose of land acquisitions and all costs relative unto. So I, I make that motion. Okay, thank you, Councilor. There's a motion by Councilor Palmucci before we- Second by Bill Harris. It's okay, we don't need a second, Bill, but we're, we're okay. I appreciate before. it anyways, though, Bill. Yeah, thank no, thanks, Bill. But I, um, I'd like to call a roll. I was so excited to start, I forgot to do that. And uh, Jen, could you, could you call a roll? This is just for attendance for tonight, just so no one's confused. <laughs> just want to make sure. Um, Councilor Andronico. Present. Councilor Kane. Present. Councilor DeBona. Present. Councilor Harris. Present. Councilor Liang. Councilor Mahoney. Present. Councilor Palmucci. Present. Councilor Phelan. Present. Chairman McCarthy. Present. Eight members. I also want to state that uh, President Liang, um, we went back and forth um, trying to get this scheduled for a while. Uh, we bounced around and she's tied up in work, but she, she hopes to make the meeting. Uh, if not, um, she's getting all the packages and getting all the updates. So uh, she's um, totally involved in this um, tonight, even though she's not on. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to bet she, she's on before we're done. Uh, so with that, I, I have a motion on the floor by Council Palmucci. Any discussion on the motion? Councilor Kane. Thank you, Chairman McCarthy. Um, I, 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 this doesn't make any sense to me now. So what was before a huge discussion largely about Quincy College, we're now just going to buy a building. For no reason. That's that's what this proposal is. Are you directing that to me? Who who wants to answer? I mean, well, it sounds like Councilor Palmucci had put on the table to take out Quincy College, uh, only because the discussion of the utilization of the building came up in many of the questions. I think Councilor. The last uh, go around, I know that a few counselors had brought up the concern that if we use some of the space uh, and it wasn't for Quincy College, would we utilize it? And um, I think this broadens, I think the point, now I'll, I'll have Councilor Palmucci talk to it. I think this broadens the scope of what we can do with that building if Quincy College doesn't end up there or it doesn't end up um that doesn't end up in the right place so we don't have um the right number of uh, um um uh, votes uh to back it uh you know in regards to quincy college i think this opens it up for more options i think so i'll i'll defer to council palmucci but i think that's where, where he's going sure i just uh i this just is like i mean it's fine 14 I mean, this, minutes this, if, if you don't understand all, it don't this is all again. imaginary <laughs> talk i mean it's like we're going to buy a building for no reason now. So we just did a whole song and dance with Quincy College and the kind folks are here tonight. But now it's not about Quincy College. It's just about acquiring a building with no said purpose. I just want to clarify that 
for the people watching at home. No, no, I, I, I disagree. It's, it's, it's what Quincy College, Council Palmucci, I think, and again, I will defer to him if we can allow him to speak a little bit. And I, I think the purpose is to make more options for the city to utilize this building down the road if and when or not or whatever when it comes to Quincy College doesn't seem to work out or it works out. Yeah, he's no, I don't. I, no, I broaden the option on the building. Council. No, it, this is uh, yeah. Again, we all again. We all it's not for case. nothing. Yeah, it's, it's not for nothing. Perfect. Well, from my perspective. Well, from your perspective, but right, you know, I think um, there's other folks that would, might differ, but I think he's looking to open up options so that. Well, we were just presented a, a 15 story building concept, so I would think that if somebody wanted to acquire this property, especially from the public side, we'd come back with. A presentation for what that property would be, not just acquire a property to hold it. Let it go in the open market. We're in a downtown redevelopment, hot real estate market, you know. Um, and this whole conversation was predicated on Quincy College being a nomad, right? So Quincy College historically was not a nomad. It actually had its own building at Coddington, and I don't know why it left Coddington, uh, but. Here we are today. Yeah, I don't know. This is this is getting crazier. So well, um, I won't be supporting any of this. But well, thank you. to talk about um, not having a home, Coddington Hall had to be redone, and it's not adequate for any type of college. It's not big enough over there. It wouldn't be big enough now. They were oh, in it's... State Street. They were in the Patriot Ledger building. They were in other in Presidential Plaza. My yeah. parents referred that to the bargain center. Yeah. Now they're trying to get out of the bargain center and find a home so that <laughs> kids would want to go to a facility that's state of the art. But if you were asked be... by your parents to go to Quincy College and the bargain center was in your mind, Ian, you wouldn't go. I don't know you what know? you're talking about, Council McCarthy, but we're the... talking about a facility that's state of the art that kids would want to go to college to. But we're not talking about that. You're saying they're taking Quincy College out of this building. No, we're not. That's All that I think, Council Palmucci, and I'll go back to Council Palmucci. I think the motion, and the motion is to just broaden the opportunities over at this building. And broaden, bet, opportun I, broaden opportunities. I think that 99.9% .9 will be Quincy College in the building besides the first, flu first few floors of City Hall. You think if I'm if I'm a betting man, you're betting against it. I'm betting for it. I, yeah, but that's not a plan. <laughs> the plan just, was you can't just say I think this is going to happen because somebody gave me hopes and dreams and wishes. Like this is a serious amount of money, and it's a private property that the city wants to take and just hold. You know, so I don't know what that anecdote about the bargain center was. I understand well, wanting to have. They don't have a art. home. I want to. I want to understand. Have I understand having state of the art education for Quincy College? This is not about that. I believe in Quincy College. I want to see Quincy College succeed and do well. But this is. I want to take Quincy College out of the discussion for the sake of acquiring a property, not in the context of downtown development. So, my comments about any of those past buildings was that they never had an adequate home. Well. There was adequate land then at the Coddington property, which the city owns. So why wouldn't we think about using that instead of wasting more money? Well, we're way past that. Well, no, no. we're just at the beginning. This is No, just we're way past going back to taking land at Coddington. Oh, so. sure. But the story is the school is a nomad. It did have a home. So clearly there was no long-term thinking. So now we're in this spot where you're saying that the school is going to fail if it doesn't have a, build if it doesn't have a building. But we're not actually acquiring the property for Quincy College now, according to this proposal. I'll defer back to Council Palmucci if he wants to add anything. No, I, I spoke for 14 minutes on it. If the councilor disagrees, the councilor disagrees. I think it's very clear what my intention is. Yeah, I mean, it'll go to vote. So, you know. Council Mahoney. So I, I actually very much agree with Councillor Kane in regards to this. Um, so we're changing the premise of, of what we were just discussing. And I had a problem with it coming in because it actually didn't include Quincy City Hall. 
But to actually say that we're now playing Monopoly and we're just buying buildings in the city of Quincy, um, that's actually, that's not really what the role of our, our job is. We don't get to pick the buildings that we say, you know what, this is, this is the one we want to put our hands on. And you know what, if it doesn't work out, we can sell it to a developer for $900,000 and let them build it. Because that has happened here in the city of Quincy. And quite honestly, we've had purchased other things in the city of Quincy with the intentions that it was going to be something with promises that they would be done by a certain time. And we don't have those things done. So we just we just don't have unlimited amounts of money. And the taxpayers aren't expecting us to sit here and say, you know, what would be a great idea is if we just buy twenty three million dollars and go out and buy a property and sit on it until we can figure out what we want to do with it. Because I think there's something more to this because it's been very much identified that the mayor wants to knock down City Hall, the old, the new City Hall, because he doesn't like it. And this is really just buying him his next new dream. And I'm not here to buy him any more dreams. So I think we really better take a step back and realize that we're here to discuss one thing and stay on, stay on the mission, people. Thank you. Any other councilors? Council Phelan? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I kind of have thought like Councillor Famucci, where I've struggled with this the decision, listening to, I've heard a lot of different people. I know there was a resolve with the suggestion. I know we're on the amendment, but it's kind of coming kind of bizarre. And I, I'm very uncomfortable with this. And I look at it as if we're gonna do something, we should look at the governance of Quincy College. Current governance led us down a path where we lost the nursing program for a while. We lost a lot of things in the college. I support the college. I want to see the college do well, but to start changing things and moving things around, I, I'm, just, I'm just not for this. And um, I will vote no. I also think that before we vote on any of this stuff, we should be looking at a change in governance of Quincy College. Either they're a city department or they're not a city department. The 2013 governance that was voted on basically puts Quincy College as a separate entity almost. There's still a little, little couple of things with the city, but it was, I, I was at the meeting, I listened to all the arguments. It was to totally separate Quincy College from the city. And, and they're not, they're a city department. And that's why I want Quincy College to do well, because the city is still responsible for it. But I think to make these changes, to do these things, to move the real estate around, move it to this group, move it to that group, I don't think it makes any sense until we see a change in the way Quincy College is. You know, there's some good leadership there now. This would probably be a good time to do it, but I just can't. I, I'm not going to support the amendment. And... Um, uh, I will have a no vote. So uh, I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Any other councilors? Seeing none, we have a motion by Councilor Palmucci. Um, Jen, can you call a roll? Councilor Andronico. No. Councilor Kane. No. Councilor DeBona. Oh, Newton. Present. I don't know. Uh, present. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Yang. Councilor Mahoney. No. Councilor Palmucci. Yes. Councilor Phelan. No. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Three to four, the motion fails. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, what I'd like to do now, uh, if I could, uh, I'll open it up to um, my colleagues, I know that uh, the questions, a lot of them were answered in detail. You probably have other questions. And uh, if we can get through that college part, if anyone has any questions on the information that was supplied to you, I looked at it in the, um, you know, there was a lot of counselors that had mixed, uh, mixed questions, city and college. And um I got Mr. Mason, I think, on there if we want to talk at all about the bonding. So I'll open it up to anybody, any of the counselors that have any questions on the information that was supplied. Mr. 
No questions. Mrs. Mahoney. I just did want to jump in there and be first on you, Mr. McCarthy. Um, so I'd like to start by asking a couple of questions about the enrollment. Um, and this would be, so it looks like it was page one of two. I'm gonna show it to you because there's a lot of pieces of paper. And I believe this is gonna to be to Dr. Cristofaro. This one actually says, um, the, the one I have, it says Quincy enrollment data. It's showing fiscal year 16 through fiscal year 20. And I'm just trying to understand when the nursing program, what, when did the nursing program fall off? Because it's, it's I'm trying to understand the, the um, enrollment here. Rick, President, you're on mute. I think he's talking. I really had a great comment. I'm sorry I didn't hear it, uh, President. Um, Ms. Mahoney, so I'm sorry. The, the, the question is about the uh, nurses uh, program and the current enrollment. Is that the question? Yeah, I'm just trying to understand your enrollment. I'm trying to understand the enrollment because it's, it, you know, from 20, fiscal year 17, fiscal year 18, um, it looks like you lost 100 students. And then in fiscal year 18 to fiscal year 19, it looks like it went down by a substantial amount of students at that point. Was it fiscal year 18 that we lost it, lost this to the nursing program? I, I believe there were well over 400 or 500 nurses there at the time. Yeah. And then um, and I, and the question that I guess I have is, you know, we're not, we're still losing students. Is that correct? We're, we haven't actually got back to a point where we're, we're back to that number, right? Back to, um, we're, we're, there is a declining enrollment. I guess that's the... Okay, so we haven't actually really, you, you might have closed the gap a little bit, but we have not actually increased in enrollment, correct? Yes. Okay. And, you know, the, the other thing is, is, you know, I'm going to just make a statement too, because the other night I did go to your finance committee meeting. I was there. And um, I guess one of the things that I was surprised at was that, you know, there was a resolve asked to be discussed, but it wasn't discussed there and that's okay. Um, but the agenda, there was really no questions, which I found really interesting because here we are here in the city of Quincy City Council were being asked to vote on a hundred and well, twenty three million dollar acquisition, but one hundred and twenty three million dollar building. And, you know, I was surprised at your finance meeting that there was, you know, there was no conversation about projections, no conversations about, you know, students coming in, no conversations about the general state of higher education today, no conversations about really anything. In fact, there was no conversations at all and the budget got passed. So I, I actually do agree with Councillor Phelan that the, the board seemed to be a little bit um, disingenuous about how they were going. And in fact, they made a statement that was interesting to me because they made a statement that said, the dialogue that's happening is, um, is they're really doing us a favor. We're, Quins the city of Quincy is not helping the college out. The college has been helping out the city of Quincy for a really long time. And I'm trying to understand that because, you know, we. We traditionally did not pay Quincy College's health care. That was something that was reimbursed to the city of Quincy. And then um, we had uh, you know, the $2.4 million. And could you just tell me, um, President to Christopher, I know I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on this, but why was it that the college couldn't pay the $2.4 million? I think at the time, because of the situation that happened with, with the nursing, I think it affected the college uh, greatly at the time. I was there, But I think that was it in the idea that in order to uh, show the support uh, from the city, that's the you know, benefits. Were well, I'm relieved with your answer because the other night at the finance meeting, um, your, the, the, your, when I say yours, I mean the college's finance meeting, they said it was because of COVID. And that's the reason why they, they, they didn't pay it. And it's not because of COVID. I just want to make sure we said that because that's a public meeting as well. Other people were there and they did say it was because of COVID. And it's not because of COVID that we didn't get a $2.4 million payment. It's because the college ran into some problems with the nursing program and you lost enrollment and you lost money that was coming into the program. And you had, did there were cuts that were made, but not substantial enough to be able to maintain the budget. And the city of Quincy, you know, Unbeknownst to anybody else, decided that we're gonna. They, it wasn't shared, but we decided we're gonna pay the healthcare, which is and, there, and that decision is good because you know it took care of the college. But since that time, we're still continuing to do that, and I think there's also a pension payment that wasn't paid either. So we're actually getting deeper into the tax 
dollars before we even get into this building, and I'm concerned. But I do think, you know, the building is not going to be built for five years. So maybe if we took a pause on this and, you know, we took a step back and didn't actually focus on a building, the nomad part of it, and we focused on the college and really tried to solve kind of some of the underpinning problems at the college, which I know you're working very hard on, Dr. Chris Farrow. And it's not an easy task by any means. And I don't want to make it seem as though I think that this is something that should be done overnight because it, it, I don't think it can be. But I don't think a new building, um, a 15-story building, 16-story building is going to take pressure off of you. And in fact, if you take that $123 million investment, which I think will end up growing, and you give it a 0% interest and you divide it over 20, 20 years or 25 years, it comes out to be close to, for those 12 floors that you're pretty much signing up for, comes close to like a $4.5 million a year budget that you'd be paying. That's more than what you're paying now. And we're going into a time where everybody's going to be competing for the same kids. So I think we really need to take a giant step backwards and not talk about acquiring buildings and building buildings and, and doing that and just kind of try to get a good footing on Quincy College to see where it can go. I personally think a conversation with the state would make tons of sense, um, but, you know, but also, you know, because it, I think the, I think the college is something that's very important for very many kids, including some kids that go here in the city of Quincy, but 81% of the population is not from the city of Quincy. So that's, that's my comment there. So not so much a question, just a comment. But I do have another question in regards to the study that was done. It was stated that, um, and it was not stated by, I don't believe it was stated by you, President Christopher, so I'm not sure who will answer this, but the study was provided by Quincy College that $50 million um, is the economic benefit of Quincy College. Could you expand on that, Dr. Christopher, the study? Like maybe Eric can, can do a better job on that than I, I can, if that's okay, Mr. Mahoney. We can, I'm sorry. If, if uh, Eric uh, Mason can answer oh, that. Oh, Eric Mason. So the, so the study was done by Quincy College, but Eric Mason is going to be answering. That's fine. Not done by Quincy College. It was done by UMass Dartmouth's Public Policy Center. I understand, <laughs> but it was done for Quincy College. So who did the city of Quincy, did the city of Quincy pay for it? Who paid for the study? The city of Quincy paid for it. The city of Quincy paid for it. So how much was the study? Uh, I believe it was $52,000. And where is that accounted for? Is that on the city side or is that on the college side? That's on the city side. Okay. So one of the questions that I had was about Seville Ave um, and how we were supposed to get paid $100,000 for services rendered for the college. And I was told because they took back their enterprise account that there are no services done for the college. Would you not say that this study would be a service for the college? Um, first off, the took back their enterprise fund. I'm unfamiliar with no, it was a statement in the package, and I'm not sure who gave yeah. the package to me, but it was in the package, and I, I'd have to find that, that, that okay, statement. Okay, you could point it out to me. I'd, I'd be happy to address it. Yeah. So, in particular, though, um, so that $52,000, million, that $52,000, you said $52,000? Yeah, it's not $52 million, counselor. Right? I said, no, it was $52,000, not $52 million. No, I know. I think it was $50 million that they're stating would, would generate to the um, to the city of Quincy. Local um, economy, yes. So could you could you expand on that for me? Yeah. So are you curious on how it's calculated or what economic development means in this context? Oh, no, I know what economic development means, but I do okay. appreciate that because maybe there's some people uh, that don't. Okay. Um, if you could expand on, I, I understand how the study is. Could you tell me, you know, it said, you know, the statements that were said in the paper and that were said was that basically um, that it was a $50 million direct $50 million directly impacting the downtown of Quincy. Would you say that's accurate? Uh, not the downtown. I'd say it's accurate for the city. It's accurate for the city. So $50 million impact for the city. When in fact, the, the study actually says it's regional. It's for the region. Could you tell me where the region is when we talk about region? Well, I think it region. So when you talk about talk, doing... They have a map. They showed a map in the, in the, in the presentation. They show a map. Yeah, okay. I would say it's probably the greater South Shore region. Yeah. If I can talk about that, there's some there's cost gradients to this calculation. It's not an evenly applied over the geographic distance. It's not how diff and diff models and implant working. Mm -hmm. My point is though that you know when there it's a ripple effect and it talks about.
how many people, and it was based in 2019 and it was a draft, uh, draft actually report, so we didn't actually get the final one. But basically it's a ripple impact study that, um, that kind of shows if you have X amount of people working in the college and you purchase X amount of supplies, it, how it impacts. And it's, just, it's not always just about the money that's being spent here. But so it, it's not directly $50 million. The impact- It's not a ripple impact. It's a, it's a difference in difference model. It's not a ripple impact model. Yeah, well, it talks about the ripple impact of, of the money where it's going to go. So what I'm, what I'm suggesting, Mr. Mason, is that it's, it's again, $50 million to, to the city of Quincy is not accurate. It's talking well, about the region. The region, the the region goes use of, The use of difference and difference model is very widely accepted in econometrics for those outcomes. So. I, I understand that, but it's, 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 anything can happen in that model too. You can, you could, you know, in, in the essence of saying that, I don't, I'm not necessarily buying that it's $50 million because the regional map and how it goes, it's also saying that, you know, a hundred people basically, it's basically based off of a hundred people living uh, that that work on the college that have a zip code in um, in Quincy, and you know, and we don't have so. What it's been, and it also talks about how they're going to shop in Quincy, eat in Quincy. Isn't that really how it works? Kind of all your 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 money is going to be spent in the local area that you're in. Um, I can explain the math behind it, but I would not characterize that as an accurate representation of the modeling approach. So why don't you explain it? Okay, so it's a difference in difference model, which is a widely accepted, widely used econometric modeling approach. What it does is it looks at post-treatment and pre-treatment periods for affected areas. Mm -hmm. In this case, the affected area would be at three levels, local, regional, and state. With what we're talking about, we're really looking at the local level. Now, mm -hmm. because there's not finite economic borders between cities, when you mm -hmm. use in-plan modeling and when you use different diff modeling, which are very widely respected and mm -hmm. widely used models, you come, you come down with basically a pre-treatment and a post-treatment period and use these, they're called interaction terms and you use, okay, how much money was created? If we follow this person in, in the untreated group versus in the treated group. And the difference between those two would be your economic benefit. Mm -hmm. And the difference between those two, you came up with $50 million is what they came up with. They came up with impact and I just don't buy it. There's no, there's, I don't buy that Quincy College has 2000 kids that go to school there that they're eating enough burgers or buying enough pizza that's going to bring in $50 million into Quincy. And I don't think we have enough people working at Quincy that's going to bring in $50 million into Quincy. And I don't think we're purchasing enough for Quincy College that's going to bring in $50 million into Quincy. I think that $50 million is a carrot that's being dropped in front of everybody's nose saying, if we don't do this, we're going to lose $50 million in Quincy. When in fact, we don't have any place for anybody to shop in Quincy. We are all leaving Quincy to go shop other places. And we're not even doing that anymore. We're actually all shopping online. So I, I just, I, I really feel like, and that's a $52,000 million, a $52, study for a $50 million outcome um, paid for by the city of Quincy to propaganda with this to, this, to, to all to of us. No, to, I just feel as though it is awesome. because it, it's a study. It's a study that we hired. It's not an independent study. It's a study that was, that was brought to us and being used and every statement that's being said saying, it just makes sense when this doesn't make sense. What makes sense is to take a step back and let the college figure out what the problems they have. And they should be paying the, they should be paying the $2.4 million and any other things that they owe us to the city of Quincy. And they should be substantially separate from the city of Quincy. And you know, at the end of the day, that's what we should be doing because 81% of the population that go to Quincy College do not reside in Quincy. They come from all other areas, including Hingham and Marshfield and Braintree and Weymouth and Brockton and Hyde Park and Boston. Um, so there were, and then there was, there, there's a there's a, a majority of them that are unidentified as to where they're coming from. I'm not sure where they're coming from. So these are problems that I do have with that. So the taxpayers in the city of Quincy shouldn't be funding a 15, a 16 story building and they should not be funding 81% of the population that's not coming to Quincy. It's nice to say that our residents should be able to go to the program for free. If they were part of the state, they might be able to do that if President Biden's wishes come true for community colleges. So thank you very much. Any other counselors? Councilor Kane. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I, I think I said this last time, but you know, this is it's a complicated issue, but none of the decisions we're gonna make tonight have anything to do with the governance of the, of the college. Um, and I think that that's probably for another day. So, um, you know, I don't want to waste any more 
time discussing this. So I'd like to move this to a vote. Oh, Councillor, um, I've got another meeting scheduled on Monday. I want to go through all the councillors' concerns. I see President Liang has joined us. Before we even think about that, to hear from the other councillors on what they think um, about moving forward. We yeah, already I mean, planned. With, with all due respect, I think that three meetings was always too much. I think we got plenty out of the way in the first one and the information provided while useful still doesn't, you know, it, none of the things we're going to discuss about governance have anything to do with this decision tonight. Mm -hmm. So please let colleagues speak, but I'm, I'm making a motion to vote on this. All right. There's a motion by Councillor Kane. Um, what's the motion, Councillor? Well, if, if it's a motion to approve or however we need to take a vote on this. So there's a motion to, um, I, I'd like the other counselors to get in before we went around. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'd really like that. Let me uh, let me just defer for a second, Councillor, before we move forward to Councillor Fallon. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, I don't think we should. Uh, I'm going to agree with you. I don't think we should be voting tonight. Um, the way we've we've pressed this meeting is we're going to sit and we're going to discuss. I have a few questions I'd like to ask. Um, I was waiting for other councillors to speak, and I uh, I raised my hand and. Um, I, I know that I brought up the covenants issue because I think it is important. I think uh, I have a few more questions I'd like to ask, but um, I, I'm not prepared to vote tonight. And I would hope that this vote would be moved on to what, the planned meeting, which is Monday, and we could vote at that time. And I, and I think there's a lot of the information, like for example, the budget we just got today, a lot of the information I'm still reading through and I'd like to, before I make a decision, I would like to um, have read through everything and know exactly what I'm voting for and not voting for. And I think we there's issues with Quincy College that need to be addressed. And I think that this is the way it's been brought to us. So we have to bring some of these issues up, like the governance and different things like that. And I think we have to bring them up and discuss them. And I think those are important issues because at the end of the day, everyone here has said they want Quincy College to succeed, like I do. I don't want to sit up here bashing a Quincy College basher or anything like that. But we do have to ask questions about the governance. We have to ask questions about, is this the right way? Is this building the right way to go? And they're all intertwined. So we have the discussion. And I think, I think we need to, um, I, I'm speaking right now on the motion, but I also have a couple other questions I want to ask. So I'll keep my questions to the motion, and I would hope that we would give a chance to um, to air out everything, get all the information out, and then we can make a better decision, in my opinion, at that time. But uh, obviously, there's a motion on the board, and uh, but I'd like to hear from other councils on what they think, and I would like to know if I can move forward and ask some questions I was going to ask. Thank you, Councilor. One of the reasons, too, I'm hesitant is because we 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 jumped around on from Wednesday to Tuesday to tonight. I wanted to make sure everyone was here. I want to make sure everybody got a chance to go through these packages. I know people have full time jobs. There's a lot of information. Um, and I and I still think that there's as Councilor Phelan said, uh, there's a lot of questions to be asked and to, you know, kick around before we really are going to look at that May 17th um, meeting and, and, and do the final vote. That was going to be a, uh, um, a target where we think we would be, get everything out of our system. So um, let me recognize on the motion, Council Palmucci. 
Uh, th uh, thank you, uh, Chairman McCarthy. Uh, yeah, I agree with Councillor Phelan. I'm I'm not prepared to vote tonight, um, and I think I said that when I made my when I made my um, motion to amend that I uh, I'm trying to separate them because I'm not ready to vote on this yet. I, I still have outstanding questions. So I mean, I would hope I, I would hope um, our colleague would would respect the fact that two councillors are at least two councils are saying they're not ready to vote and they want to do some more, do some more work on this. Um, but I mean, this is the legislative process. It's, it's dry. It can be dry and time consuming. And I don't, I don't think any time that we're talking about millions of taxpayers money, um, you know, that's wasted, wasted time. We should be thorough. Um, and you know, this isn't a blind audition. It's not, what is it? The voice or the, the, the singer, the song, I don't know, the thing with the, the Gronkowski was on, whatever it is. Um, but you can't talk about whether or not to invest in the college without talking about the governance. We have to know who we're investing the money in that we're being asked to invest in. And, you know, I, I have a, obviously a tremendous amount of respect for uh, Councillor Phelan, who can weigh in on, on his years of service previously to the council, um, you know, on the council and his interactions with Quincy College uh, and matters that came before the council. I, in my years in the council, I, I've been asked as well to, uh, I remember I took, I took a vote that they wanted more separation from us. And he said, the only way we're going to survive is if we can get out from underneath the, 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 uh, the city. And we said, okay, well, if that's the only way you can survive, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll give you more autonomy. You know, I'm still on the council, and now that now they're coming back and saying the only way we can survive is if the if the if the city pays for a new building. It's like okay, I have a lot of issues there. Um, that's a lot to work through, and, and I agree. I, I think a couple of people have, have raised a governance issue. I governance is a is an issue for this. It's certainly relevant, and it's certainly uh, I'm not I'm not done thinking about it and having conversations with folks. I mean, I. I heard from a resident during the course of this meeting um, about their opinions on it. And so I value that. And I value the, the questions and comments my colleagues have. I have some other questions that I planned on asking tonight as well. Um, you know, I, I spoke for a while at the beginning. I wanted to, I was going to go towards the back end with that. But um, yeah, I, I, I think that this is, uh, I, I think this is an important vote. It's a very important vote. And I, I, I'd like more time. I'm not ready to vote tonight either. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Chair recognizes Councillor Harris and then President Liang. Um, <clears throat> thank you. Um, thank you, Chairman uh, McCarthy. Um, th this evening, um, I was, again, um, I was figuring that there wouldn't be a vote this evening because we, I saw the, the number of emails that went through that we, we weren't going to have uh, the nine, nine of us present. Um, and the possibility of that. And, um, and I think um, when I spoke before, I, you know, folks know how I feel about the, uh, uh, you know, and I guess it's a sentimental um, situation about the, the Quincy College uh, when it comes to myself. I already have spoken about that. But uh, my, uh, I have a little bit of uh, confusion about what is actually the motion that's being asked of us this evening. Are we... Are we at, um, it was the motion to approve or a motion to come out of committee. Um, what is the motion actually uh, that that's taking place? Because no matter what, it has to come out of committee. Am I correct? Um, in order to be able to be voted on um, in front of the council during a, a regular meeting. Yeah, so, you're correct, council. Okay, so uh, so. Uh, what what is the actual uh, if there's some type of vote going to take place? What uh, what exactly are we voting on? Whether or not a motion to approve, motion to come out of committee. Um, so if there could be a clarification, uh, I would feel a, a lot more comfortable. I mean, um, you know, I, I kept hearing uh, again. I'm going to uh, reiterate that. Um, I kept hearing about the, um, you know, the uh, we have 19 percent of the, the the enrollment at a, uh, at the college uh, is Quincy, 
Um, but in order for a college to succeed, it only makes sense that, that you know, whatever college that uh, across the country, in order for a college to succeed is that the enrollment is never locally, even though it's a community college or what, however we categorize Quincy College, uh, whether it's a, a municipality that's handling it. Um, you know, we, we do need, and it's not a matter of flipping the bill. I think the other 81% of the people that we're going to have at Quincy College is actually going to help us survive. And that's what is really needed because we have, we have you know, we're going to be sitting at two uh, um, in the next few weeks. We're, uh, all of us m more than likely going to be sitting through, um, through graduations. And we're going to see all the places that our kids who are getting great educations in North Quincy and Quincy uh, College, uh, 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 they, they're going everywhere and, and uh, uh, being very successful. And it's important that the folks, the, the kids that, um, you know, unfortunately can't afford or didn't have the grades to get to the other colleges have a place to go here in Quincy. And, um, and, and that's really my goal is to preserve the fact that our, our, our folks have an opportunity, our kids, um, you know, I mean, uh, it, I, I won't see my probably see my grandchildren in, uh, in in college, but but they be able to have the opportunity to go to a, a place like Quincy College. And um, but again, I need clarification about what we are voting uh, this evening on. And it, again, um, I'm ex I was expecting us to be able to vote um, uh you know, on, on, on Monday night, uh, have the finance meeting and then take it out of finance, I mean, uh, finance on Monday and vote during the regular, uh, regular meeting like we, we normally do. So um, with that, that's, that's really all I have to say. And, and I understand everybody's concern about the taxpayer dollars and there's nothing more that I've heard. And, and, uh, and I'm a firm believer of, of um, and what I say, if you look at my Facebook pic, uh, um, my Facebook, uh, um, whatever it's called, it's not about me as sitting in the in the seat as ward councilor. It's about the people I represent, and the people I represent. Um, you know, there has been minimal negativity uh, towards this um, issue. I've heard a lot from other other wards, but. Uh, so that's why that's where I stand. I, I represent the people that that uh, I, I, I vote for the people that I, I, I um, represent. And um, and again, clarification on tonight's vote is very important. So thank well, you. Right. Thank you, Chairman McCarthy. Thank you, Councillor. Well, Councillor Kane was is, we went just to recap this. The motion by Councillor Palmucci failed to change the language. We're back to the language that's in the order in front of us. Um, so as written, Councillor Harris, um, the order 2021-029 would be what we're voting on. But before we get there, I want to go back and recognize um, President Liang. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to apologize and uh, say thank you to my colleagues and to you, Mr. Chairman, for um, your patience as I was trying to wrap up a work meeting to get here tonight. and. You know, I think I came after reviewing all, all the information that was sent over to us from the last meeting, there was quite a number of questions asked um, by all of our colleagues. And I think that the information that was provided, unfortunately, does not get me to a place where I feel comfortable moving forward. And I will just say too that, you know, while I certainly don't disagree with the value of the college and more often than not, you know, I don't think it's any secret that I tend to actually appreciate and share the mayor's vision for this city. I think that, you know, he's incredibly effective and has this vision that, really has had a phenomenal impact in our downtown for our small businesses and for residents. And, you know, I, though, despite that, I'm really trying to approach this with a financial lens. And so the information that was provided to us, um, you know, between the last meeting and this time around, again, that's the lens that I used when I was going through it. And after going through all that, it's just, you know, from that financial lens, this doesn't make sense to me at this point. You know, we're not just committing to the $23 million that's in front of us this evening or with this item, but we're also committing to, an uncertain amount of money that's going to come down the pike for the actual build out of this building, right? Not unlike what's happened 
with other projects in the past, right? Where we fund, you know, a certain amount to do the, the work that needs to get done beforehand, the due diligence that needs to get done beforehand. And then when it comes due for the actual cost of the build out itself, that's a separate item that we have to review. And similarly, so it's the same thing that needs to happen here. Um, and again, just looking at that, I'm, I'm, I'm coming into it with the understanding that the $23 million commitment isn't something that just ends at the 23 million, right? It comes with the caveat that it opens up the, the meeting in the future, right? For us to look at and review and potentially approve, you know, the full actual build out amount of what that's going to look like for this building, you know, and looking at the, that financial piece, as well as looking at the financial pieces that were sent over to me during the last meeting, I asked for, you know, financial information for the last five years, as well as projections for just at least at a minimum, the next three years to demonstrate, you know, how we're going to break even if at all, you know, with the rent that needs to get paid and other expenses that need to get paid throughout the college. And while that was sent over, and, and I was happy to review the six line items that were sent over on the next three years of projections, it still does not make sense to me, right, personally. I mean, I look at that and I see, okay, on average, the history in the last, you know, five to six years is that enrollment has gone down, right, on an average of a 6% decline. The average, you know, tuition dollars have seen a decline in the last five to six years, about, about 12%. And then the projections looking ahead see an uptick in enrollment and see an uptick, you know, in, in tuition dollars, which great. It, it's yes, you want to have a positive projection, but I was more so asking for that information to have a realistic projection, right? And understanding where that information comes from and having something that is going to be a guarantee for how we're going to meet those projections moving forward. And I just don't see that from what was provided, you know, and Again, I'm approaching this with this lens in my experience where, you know, and I've said this a million times, I sound like a broken record, but I want folks to understand why I'm approaching this way I am. If, you know, back when we were building out restaurants, right? If I, if I went to a bank and I said, I want to borrow X amount of dollars to build out a new restaurant, I would have to show some guarantees about how I'm going to hit our break even point, right? To move forward, to take out that loan, to build out that space. And I approach this the same way. You know, if we're going to spend $23 million to purchase this building, and invest in this property and then see some revenues coming in, there need to be some guarantees. And I simply, again, based off of the information that was provided, just don't see that. And I don't, I don't, based off of the risk, don't see it being worth the risk right now. And look, again, I want to reiterate what I said earlier, right? I, I'm not questioning at all the value of this college. I, I've shared with a number of you that one of my closest friends got her life back together because of the college. You know, she, she's a working mom with kids under the age of four who was able to you know, now have a good job because she went to the college. And so personally, you know, I want to see it succeed. Right. But again, with the financial lens that I think, you know, I need to be responsible for and approaching this with, I just don't see it being worth the risk right now. And so I don't know what a couple of days over the weekend is going to change with that. You know, I, I just, the guarantees that need to come in just do not outweigh the risk right now. And so if there is a motion to move forward, you know, between now and Monday, um, given all of that information and everything that was provided to us and reviewed, I, I think that for me anyways, personally, it, unfortunately, um, I would like to move forward with the vote. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Council, uh, Chair recognizes Councilor Andronico. Thank you, Chairman McCarthy. Uh, I, I definitely appreciate the uh, sentiment and the motion made by my colleague, Councilor Kane. Uh, regarding a vote for tonight. Uh, however, I'm going to have to respectfully disagree that we move forward with a vote this evening. Uh, and the main reason for that are the conversations that I've had with constituents over the last few days. Uh, when I've had those conversations, I've been able to let them know we have you know, three meetings scheduled, one from a few weeks back. We had one tonight, and then we have another one the following Monday. Uh, and in each of those conversations, and I feel like we've all had them, uh, I've been level with them that you know, we weren't expecting to take a vote uh, until Monday. And I'll do respect. I would like to be able to hold up that end of the bargain in those conversations that I've had. And likewise, our last meeting where we passed a resolution, uh, essentially seeking more information regarding the steps in the process to uh, have Quincy College join the state system. Uh, I've yet to hear uh, a thorough enough update on that. And I'd like to hear more about uh, that response and the response to that resolution that we had passed uh, before taking a vote. Uh, so for those two reasons, I, I would respectfully ask a, a reconsideration uh, for a vote from tonight uh, to Monday instead. Thank you, Councilor Andronico. Councilor Kane. Yeah, um, 
so again, I just want to separate all these things because this is a this is a murky discussion, and you can just sense how uncomfortable everyone is about it, right? Um, people don't want to disappoint people, and that happens. This is a vote for a property acquisition, right? Um, this is not a vote on Quincy College's governance or its future. Um, I actually agree with Council Pamuche. I think that you know these discussions do take a long time, but it actually should take much longer than this if we were thinking strategically about not only a, a valuable piece of real estate but a strategic plan and potentially, as I suggested before, a capital campaign to support the building of a physical infrastructure for a municipal university or municipal college. Um, you know, all the information that we were provided was only because we asked questions. The information should have been provided because it should have been provided as part of a plan to develop a property that supports the ongoing uh, operations of a college. Um, I still, I remain, Quincy College has a lot of promise, and there are many things that I hope to work with Dr. De Cristofaro and his team on in order to take the college in a direction which I believe aligns more acutely to the innovation economy that we're seeing, right? Uh, that has rapidly just transformed our world over the last year, uh, accelerated it in directions that people don't even fathom right now how fast this digital economy is moving and how every part of society is going to change with the adaption of, of technology. Um, but this vote, this vote, which, um, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to say, like, I'm, I'm going to move forward on this. It's a vote for real estate land acquisition. I don't know what more questions can be answered that's going to change over the weekend. Um, you know, this meeting I had asked that we have uh, next week, there was a lot of scheduling conflict. You know, I don't know why we had to have three meetings. That was, this is all arbitrary. But um, we don't take votes to have votes. We take votes. And there's a decision to be made about a real estate land acquisition. Uh, so I'm making a motion to uh, approve. You can say yes or say no, this $23 million bond. Um, and as chair, Councilor Kane, I'm not going to entertain that motion. Um, I don't think you can early do on. Early on, you talked about Council Palmucci when he tried to broaden the order about a new building. Now you're just talking new building and it probably is going to be Quincy College's home. No, so, don't wait. With all well, due respect, me, the, vote, the vote was to separate Quincy College out and just acquire a property. So people are in positions to vote tonight. We already did take a vote on something that was going to cut Quincy College out of the equation. No, specifically. No. He was trying to broaden the expectations if something came down the road later. Quincy College is still headed across the street. You know it and I know it. You know, so I like to go around the horn and talk to my colleagues. I know that Councilor Palmucci has more questions. Councilor Harris. Councilor DeBonna hasn't even spoken yet. So I'm not going to entertain the motion. No, they can ask questions on the motion. You can't deny my privilege to make a motion to vote on. As the chair, I'm going to deny your motion. There's, there's probably some sort of ethics violation to be had here. This is ridiculous. I don't think you can do that, Dave. Well, as the chair, we're going to deny it. And we're going to go around and we're going to talk to my colleagues that haven't spoken. And we're going to talk more about Quincy College and the building. Point of order, Mr. Uh, chairman. Councilor Palmucci. Uh, yes, just a uh, state of point of order. Uh, at any point, any uh, member of the committee, uh, if they disagree with a ruling of the chair, can challenge the rule of the chair, and then it's a vote of the council as to whether or not they uphold the ruling of the chair or they object to the ruling of the chair. So if they if you get an affirmative vote from majority, then the ruling of the chair stands. If you don't, then it doesn't. Certainly not an ethics violation. Hey, whatever. I mean, it's certainly not, it lacks decorum. I'll tell you that. I'll challenge that, you know, if you want to play games. No one's playing games, counselor. You are. You are everyone, just, everyone's uncomfortable about making a decision. It's a very simple decision. You say yes or no. I don't think we're ready to make a decision. You said everybody's uncomfortable, but you're ready to make a decision. Correct. And I'm uncomfortable. I don't want to make a decision. I don't know about you. Can we vote on the, the challenge? Go the ahead. Chair? 
I'm going to recognize Councillor DeBonic because he has not spoken. Councillor? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think what's going on tonight is what I'm hearing on the street. I'll be honest with you, this is a mixed, it's a very mixed, it's almost a split down the middle, 50-50. Um, I've been hearing people that are fully against this whole thing. I've been hearing people that really want this. Um, just tonight, listening to my colleagues, um, and that's why I waited to speak, is I'm just not ready yet. I um, That's why I was a president vote on the amendment. I just wasn't, I didn't have enough information to make a decision. Um, getting back a little bit to Councillor Phelan about the governance, um, a voice a voice in decision-making and transparency is one part of it, but I think the more direct part is the control and authority of the city council. For me, and I'm only going to speak for myself, I don't want to give up the right to what building is going to be built over there. I want to say, and I think it should come through this council, um, as a say on what should be built and how it should be built. Um, very similar to, us, I'll give you an example, being on the, the Sterling Building Committee when I was on the school committee. Um, and we had a committee, um, this new Southwest uh, Middle School Building Committee, and we talked about different propositions from the committee on how we wanted to build this out. And they took, um, you know, the architect and the developer took it into consideration how we wanted to build it. One of the examples was, is um, Sterling is a five through eight configuration. I asked for a, an entrance to be a fifth grade entrance. And lo and behold, they put a fifth grade entrance just on one side of the building. And then they have the sixth, seventh and eighth on the other side of the building. Um, I'm not in, I'll be very honest with you. I'm not in the position to give up this control, I guess I can call it, like we did with the air rights um, at Quincy Center T-Station, um, our air rights at the North Quincy T-Station. I think I want more control of this if it was to move forward on what is it going to look like in a year? What is it going to look like in two years? How's the economy? Is there a recession? How's the enrollment at Quincy College? Are we ready to do this? Now, I, um, I know that's not in the discussion here, but this is, you know, 23 million is for the Quincy College land acquisition and initial design services. Um, and, you know, to Council Pamucci's credit, I, I, I do think it's, um, I do think it's economically good for us to do this. However, I'm not totally sold on Quincy College going there. And I've, I've stressed this to a lot of, to, to, to several people, um, I don't know as a suggestion. Um, I don't know where the votes are going to be. Uh, I'm not ready to really vote on this tonight. Um, but a suggestion would be some type of building committee, um, a committee that's built on how this is going to be built, who's going to be housed in it, and how is it going to move forward. I, I feel that the city council should have more control over dictation on how it's going to be built, what's going to be housed there, and not just give up the authority and the control to the mayor um, and allow them just to, to build whatever, whatever is proposed. Cause sometimes things change over time. Um, if this build out, is going to take six years, five to six years, who knows what's going to happen in that time frame. Um, so that's where I'm wrapping my head around and I'm not feeling comfortable with is, and, and I, I, I fully understand what Councilor Kane's coming from um, with, with his, with his, um, with his words. Uh, but I'm just not ready to 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 commit to any type of yes or no yet. I'm I'm still I'm still debating and 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 trying to listen to folks. Cause see, at the end of the day, we can all sit up here, but I got to listen to the constituents and how they feel. And all of them, just about I've I've talked to, has spoken about. Listen, we don't want Quincy College to not succeed. We want it to survive. We want it to do well. But this is a big undertaking and investment to put on the taxpayers of the city. And that's been probably the main concern that I have listening to folks out there uh, representing the entire city as an at-large council. So I haven't wrapped my head around uh, particularly voting on this tonight. And I know a lot of people have vested interests on this. I see a lot of folks from Quincy College on here. Uh, but you have to take yourself out of the position. You have to ask yourself, You, we represent the taxpayers of the city. We represent the citizens. So 
at the end of the day, I listen to them and um, I've gotten a lot more emails and phone calls and text messages on this. And I want to make sure that it's the right decision. And I'm just not fully swing my head around to vote tonight. Um, I, 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 I'm just not there yet. I, I would like more deliberation. I'd like to hear my counselor, fellow counselors on how they feel. Um, we've all earned the right to be up here as counselors, the nine of us. We all are entitled to our opinions. And we have to listen to the folks on, on the outside. So uh, that's, that's what I feel. So um, I would like more control and more authority on this. Um, so we have a say on what's, what's basically going to be built if it, if, it, if it goes and passes. But um, I want to see the call succeed. Um, I don't want to see it fail. But I want to make sure that we're making the right investment in the amount of money that we're putting towards this for the taxpayers of the city. So with that, if we could, I know there's a little bit of back and forth with everything. I mean, there's no harm in waiting until Monday to have this vote, um, sleeping on it, seeing how we feel. We've done this in the past. This is my sixth year being on the council. We've done this in the past where we've slept on it, got a little bit more intake, um, you know, opinions from the outside, which is the public, um, the constituency, and um, and then come back on Monday um, and have a vote, basically. on. Uh, and if there's any other questions that need to be answered, let everybody really digest this and um, take a little step back and then make a decision, hopefully on Monday. It's it's what it gives you the weekend to think about it. So um, with that, I, I, I'd, I'd like to, if we could reserve this, I don't want to table anything or do it like that. Cause I want to let everybody speak, but um, that's how I'm feeling. So thank you, counselor. I mean, uh, thank you, chairman McCarthy. Thank you, counselor. Uh, I'll recognize president Liang and then we can go back to the objection motion. If that's what we're going to do. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. So I just, I want to just respond a little bit to, to some of what my colleagues have said. And so, you know, I, I appreciate Councillor King calling to the fact that this is a very uncomfortable, uh, very difficult decision for all of us to make. And I don't think that's presumptuous, right? With anything we do, we always approach it with this lens of being extremely careful and deliberate about what we do. This is no different than any of that. And, you know, it's just to reiterate, for me, like, for a lot of you who know me, like I, I want to try to do what's best as possible to try to see these kinds of things move forward in the best way for everyone involved. But again, the, the numbers just aren't there at the end of the day, whether it's talking about the college piece or the purchase piece, it just, again, financially with that lens does not make sense to make that kind of commitment. And as far as, you know, deliberating today through, through Monday, you know, we had four days to go over quite a bit of, if, I mean, this is, this is, all of the information that was sent to us on Monday, and, and we had to prepare for tonight with that information. And, and we had until tonight's meeting to prepare and to review all that information. Uh, between tonight and Monday, I don't know how many more you know, pieces of paper are going to, to show us that the numbers have now changed or that you know, the, it, it, we now have a hard number for what that build out number is going to look like between Mount. I mean, this we, we've had the information sent to us and we've had time to review. And in addition to that, when it comes to, you know, waiting and deliberating, I'm all for more engagement. The more engagement I can have, I mean, come on, you all know me. Like if I can sit down and have a conversation, I would love to have it. I would have as much engagement as possible. But, you know, to so my understanding, I couldn't make this meeting tonight when it was scheduled. And when it was scheduled, there wasn't enough time for me to reschedule a work standing meeting to make it tonight. I, there was a good chance I wasn't going to be here for it. And yet we still moved forward. Why? Why couldn't we have waited another week, right? There was an understanding that we needed to have this meeting. Okay, well, we had it. You know, if, if we couldn't hold off a meeting because I couldn't be here for this important conversation, why now are we suddenly able to hold off another day? It just, it's, I'm very frustrated because, you know, there's a lot of information that we've had to digest over this last month, a lot of information these last four days that we've all had to take time to digest and look through as well. And, and where I am with that after looking at all of it, I can't speak on behalf of everyone else, is that I don't see what's going to change these hard, very large numbers between now and Monday. I don't see how the economics of that is going to change between now and then. And then just, you know, my last point, Mr. Chairman, if I could, to Councilor Devona's point about having control over this property, you know, would I love to see as an at-large counselor what happens in every single neighborhood and dictate how that is? Yeah, sure, to an extent, right, on behalf of the residents and what they would like to see, but specifically to this building, where it is in the downtown, it's part of the URDP. And, and least folks forget, the URDP is a document that we as counselors, as legislators, can actually go in and change at any time as an ordinance. If I wanted to go in right now and go into the URDP and say, I wanna make these amendments, I can propose that 
to the rest of us and change what the buildings and what development looks like in the URDP. That was the whole purpose of extending the URDP, right? The urban redevelopment plan is to have a say in what gets developed in the downtown. We as counselors are lucky enough that we can actually go in and revisit that document if and when we need to. We've already seen in my time here, I think four or five iterations of that, that we've had to digest and amend and make changes to. So we fully do have the capability to still control to some extent what happens here in the downtown. So, you know, I just, I felt it was important to clarify those two things you know, on one end of it, again, I, I, I am all for continued engagement and this may sound hypocritical of me to some extent though, this meeting, I wouldn't have even been able to engage in this meeting, but it got scheduled anyways, right? It, it got scheduled instead of being held off another week. We still move forward with it tonight. And so I feel like if we are still moving forward with meetings, even when one or two or three of us, however many of us can't make it because we have to get the meeting in, all right, well, here we are. We've had the meeting. Let's move forward and let's move on from that. And as far as continuing to make sure that we're realizing the vision of the downtown on behalf of the residents here in the city, we can look at the URDP if we need to. And, and this building currently sits within the URDP, so we can certainly do that as well. So I just... I. I I normally don't just get on a soapbox and say these things, but I felt it was really important to express what I'm what I'm feeling on this because Councillor Kane's right. This is not unlike every other decision we make. It's not an easy one to make, and and I just I feel it's important to share that a lot of thought and a lot of deliberation has been gone into this for the last four weeks. You know, among all of us, and and I just think that if we were willing to move forward with the meeting when you know selfishly I couldn't even be here for it, then we were quickly moving forward with that and scheduling it. Well, then you know here we are. So I just. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I do appreciate you giving the space for that. Thank you. Thank you, President Liang. And, and to the scheduling of the meeting, we would have lost this whole week if we didn't try. Thursday night. I didn't have anybody. I was losing people all the time. It's a tough time of year um, in regards to budgets and other places that run the fiscal July to June. So, um, you know, um, I'll be trying to schedule the budget meetings. And uh, Mr. DeBonner has already indicated he, he can't do um, some of the times that I propose. So I have to work around that too. So it's going to, it's going to keep happening. Um, I'd like to go back to Councillor Kane and uh, uh, Ms. Manning. Um, and I believe unless Councillor Kane wants to correct me, uh, he's uh, challenged the, um, the objection of not entertaining the motion. So I'd like to do a roll call vote. A yes is in favor of moving forward with a vote. No, a no is against it. Council Andronico. Yes. Council Kane. Yes. Council DeBona. No. Council Harris. No. Council Liang. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council Pamucci. I'm very sorry, but what are the votes again? Ye yes is a, to have. A, a yes is to move forward with a vote and a no is to move forward with C Councilor Kane's motion. A no is against it. Okay, then I vote no. Thank you. Councilor Phelan. No. Chairman McCarthy. No. The challenge, the... Five to four knows. So it fails. It fails. The challenge. Yes. So I'd like to go back now. And and I understand I've heard everybody about having time and trying to make meetings. And you know, we'll look you know, we put something down for the 17th that we put down that we thought we might need. Maybe we need to go longer. Um, I totally understand that. Um, and everybody has made it clear they're uncomfortable or they're comfortable. And we've had this before on, on other votes. So what I'd like to do is open it up to any other questions this evening, any counselors that want to talk about any of the questions or statements of the hard work that the Quincy College folks put in to answering your questions one more time. Stay on that. Don't get off of that. And then we can discuss anything about bonds 
with Mr. Mason and other things that pertain to what's on the agenda tonight. So, Mr. Mahoney, go right ahead. Just, just wondering. So you just said we could do this Monday night or we could go longer. So if on Monday night there's a motion to vote. Monday night there's a Monday night There's, there's a, a motion to vote on Monday. Are you going to do the same thing, though, where we overrule the motion? Yeah, I'm just curious. No, I don't know. I'm just checking because you well, know when Monday comes, you know, I'm sure you'll come up with a variety of new questions. It's just been um, very entertaining. This if regard. Monday night doesn't work out, then I can change it to another date, and we can keep talking about it. And I can go to every counselor and see if they can make it on whatever night. We'll keep scheduling till everybody's there, so, so you nobody feel are like they were Monday shortchanged. Night? I'm just confused. Are you suggesting people say they can't come Monday night? Is that what you're saying? No. Okay. We'll have more than Monday night if we have to. Okay. If Monday night doesn't pan out and we're all uncomfortable again, <laughs> we can keep going further. So we're going to stay uncomfortable until we can get to maybe. All right. I got it. Um, we're going to stay on it, Mrs. Mahoney, until we get it right. You know, early so on. What's right, Dave? So I guess I just want clarification. What's get it right mean? What does that we're mean? We're going to get the right decision. We're going to try to get the right decision. What's the right decision? We're going to try to get the right decision for Quincy College. And <laughs> hopefully we'll be in agreement. We're not all going to agree, but we're not going to. Uh, so at we're least gonna I'm not going to. We're going to stay in the committee until everybody says yes. You're going to hold us hostage until everybody says yes to this. No, no we're back to the. We're back to the hostage stuff again. I just, no, we're not. We're not holding anybody well, hostage. What you're doing. <laughs> you you're not have to get, That's for sure. This you don't is have the to get dramatic. You've ever seen. Do you um, have any questions yeah, have about question. the college, Mrs. Mahoney? Yeah. No, it's actually not about. It's about a land acquisition. So you are. It's it's about land. Well, right ahead. Yep. So so in regards to um, one other thing that I'd like to know is um, if we could find out exactly. Because um, one of the things that's been said is that, you know, if Quincy College was to go out of business tomorrow, we own everything. So could Mr. Mason um, figure out how much the pension, what the pension would mean and how many people are vested in the pension and what exactly that number is? Because I don't think we got that in the package. That way we have some other piece of paper to add to it. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> and the yeah. current obligation was included in the paperwork, though. Well, I didn't see it, so I'm sorry. Because there was, you know, unfortunately, I dropped my package and papers went everywhere. So that was my own fault. But, but what was what was the current calculation for how much how much the pension is? I have it up uh, to my right. I have it up here. Let me bring it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you, I'm sorry, are you bringing something up for us to all look at? Yeah, no, I'm actually uh, scrolling through this. Okay. Um, I can respond if you guys have any questions. I can just, after I find it, respond to it. I just didn't know if you were sharing it for us. Uh, I want to hold up the meeting. If, while I look for it through the package, I'll, uh, I'll be but happy. How did you come up with the information? Did you get it from the retirement office? How did the, how did the information? Yes. Any evaluation has to be approved by PARAC through the retirement board. So it's the, it's PARAC and the Quincy Retirement Board? Yes. Yeah, the actuary for the Quincy Retirement Board comes up with the number and PARAC uh, approves it. Out of curiosity, if something's been paid late, how's the actuary, how does that come up if they're, if they're paying their bill? Because like, they're making it on... Um, if there, if your bill is due on, I'm just on the first, and you don't pay for a year, um, you know, isn't the actuary basing, basing it on the amount, the assumptions that the payments are being made on time? Yes, they are. Okay. I'm unfamiliar so, how the direct amount would affect it. My projection with that, it would show an increase in the unfunded liability since that funded contribution was not made. Yeah. yeah. So the reason why I bring that up is because in one of these really fancy reports, these powers in Sullivan, it actually brought up the fact, um, and then also in one of the management reports, it brought up the fact that um, Quincy College, it's it's actually it's actually online. I think you just posted it. 
Um, I don't have my hand. I don't have it handy, but it basically said that, you know, in some cases it was paid a year and in some cases it was paid longer than that later. It was late. So I'm kind of concerned about that as well. So, you know, and I think it's important for us to understand all of those things. How, how much, you know, if, if they, if they're not paying that, how much does that cost the, the taxpayers of the city? There's a lot of questions about that. It has nothing really to do with the acquisition for the vote because, you know, I personally think that the college needs to be able to be really substantial in the packages they're giving us. The numbers that are they're giving, they're very fluid. If you ask a number about enrollment, it's it's um it's different in every place you look at it. If you Google search and, and for for it, it's it's different. So, I, I and I don't really appreciate the, the fact that um that we're going to stay in meetings until we get to a until I guess until we get the vote we want. But I, but I don't know what the vote's going to be. But it just seems like it's, it does seem a little strange. So, and if you could confirm, Mr. Mason, you don't have to do it tonight, but if you could confirm that and just e email it to me, because it's not in my package, it's just flipping through everything. I'm, I must have misplaced it. So just send it to me. That'd be great. Absolutely. Thanks. And I know you were very helpful in posting all those management reports to the website. They're very helpful. I, re I really appreciate it. Appreciate I, I learned a lot. <laughs> Spent a lot of time reading. <laughs> well, thank you. All set? Yeah. Chair recognizes Councillor Harris. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Chairman. Um, one of the questions I have is, um, um, what's the project projected rent um, if we stayed where they are for the length of the time of the bond? Who can answer that? Because that's uh, that's pretty important. Uh, if from what I saw, is it two hundred? Uh, I mean, two million dollars a year we pay in rent there, across the street. Can anybody answer that? Mr. Mason, or the president? Or oh, Eric? You want to hop in, Eric? You want me to do it? Uh, you can answer it, uh, President. Yeah. Um, we're looking at uh, probably the, in 22, um, the rent at uh, in Quincy here is uh, 2.4, um, 2424, uh, $4,408. So 2.4 million. Uh, and then that, that goes up uh, every year and ends in 26 um, uh, with two, 2 million in, in six. And then also Plymouth, but you're you're, you're uh, really asking about Quincy, so that's what that is. There, uh, Councilor Harris. So I, I don't have a calculator with me, but uh, the length of the bond times that amount of money, if Quincy College was to stay uh, where it is, Mr. Mason, do you have any chance you you have a calculator? Or, or I know you're 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 one of the smartest kids I know. Um, you, you may not know too many people, Councillor, with all due respect, then. <laughs> um, so, yeah, at two, at $2 million a year, um, over, you know, this would probably possibly be a $40 million bond. So that equals $80 million. Um, if we look at, like, the current um, high-quality mar high quality market bonds, it's, it's about what we use to gauge um, interest rates because high-quality market bonds are what the Federal Reserve Economic Database monitors. That's a private corporation has double A, single A, triple A bonds. So very similar to Quincy. Um, the difference is that this deal would not be taxable. So we get an even lower rate than what they have. Um, but a short, uh, the most direct answer to your question is that would support somewhere about $67 million in debt service over that time frame, given current interest rates. Very good. And is, is that a high uh, rent for the, the, that space? Is anybody, can anybody answer that for me? I, I can talk broadly about the, the the market, but maybe not particular to this. Um, I think one of the issues that Quincy College runs into is that it's educational space and office space. And anytime you have a non-optimization of space, you, you're going to absorb inefficiency always results in more costs. Um, that's uh, kind of one of the sad realities of economics and finance. So, yes, I mean, is it higher for Quincy College? Most likely because it's not optimized space. Is it higher for the market, though? Um, I don't have the expertise to to deliberate that exactly. I don't know, Doctor. Maybe Joe Shea would have that information. 
Um, anybody, Joe, um, Joe Shea, uh, or Dr. I can I, I can speak to that, Councillor um, um, Eric and and President De Christopher. Right, we we've, we've been through the leases that the Quincy College has in the related Beale Building. Um, the, those rent expenses escalate each year. Um, the numbers that we're talking about are, are for the active leases that exist now that expire uh, over the course of, of academic year 25-26 for some space and 26-27 for other space. Uh, therefore, those we should fully expect those rents to go up uh, with any lease renewals in President's Place. Uh, the, what we see for the space in President's Place is it, it varies significantly. Um, Quincy College was fortunate to lock in at uh, lease per square foot rates uh, before Quincy endured its, its fabulous downtown renewal. So we should expect those rates per square foot to go up uh, notably, which is, which is what we want with the downtown renewal. It's what we want with commercial growth in the downtown. So thank you, um, Mr. Shea. Um, so uh, I guess one of my my concerns is 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 if Quincy College was to leave President's Place, uh, where could it actually go to exist at this point? You know, I I mean, I've heard everybody talk about you know they want Quincy College to to continue. But if we have an opportunity to build a, a building that would, could actually bring in revenue, even with the college there, or, or suffice some other uh, means of, of uh, saving money, whether it would be different offices that have to be there, I, I mean, it, it, I just heard a number of $67 million. I mean, um, Again, where would the college go? And, and you know, and again, the facilities. Now we talk. Uh, there was talk of the nursing program, which I, I've talked about before. And um, uh, the nursing program, um, the nursing program is it needs a, a facility with state of the art in order to compete with other other colleges. It needs state of the art. Um, facilities and uh, you know the, the little bit that I've I've seen at, um, uh, at at the college when I've been there. I mean, are are are, are we there? Is that the place? Is that the right place to be? Or I, I mean, in order and and I, the nursing program is again the gem of what was Quincy College, and you know. Uh, let me ask you, what are, are the options? Uh, you know, what are the options? And I mean, that's my concern. And, um, and it, can anybody, you know, can anybody speak to that? And then, and, and it, we, we talk, there's been talk of uncertainty. I mean, and then I, I saw uh, President Liang hold up the, 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 all the papers we were looking at, we were sent. You know, it almost looked identical to, to what I had in my hand. And I mean, I mean, obviously, uh, I'm glad that we're, we're, we're going to go forward. But something tells me that there are no options, are there? And I believe that, that that's the case, that there are no options. So we talk about paying 2.3, 2.4, 2.7, 2.8 million dollars, I think we're going to be paying more in the long run. And that's the right thing that should be being told to the taxpayers that if we continue with Quincy College, that's the true thing that needs to be spoken, not pitchforks and flames and, and what's wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, but that's what has to be, be talked about. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor uh, Harris. The chair recognizes Councillor Phelan.
Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I do have a couple of questions, but I also want to make a quick statement. Um, I made that vote based on that we were going to vote Monday night, and I think we still should. And uh, we got a lot of material. I have some questions to ask, but I did make that vote based as we have done a number of new more times. And I've only been on the back on the council less than a, a year and a half where we've given courtesy. I've given courtesy to every counselor. If they weren't comfortable with something to, to listen and move it to the, to the meeting when we said we were going to make the vote. So I would hope that this is on the agenda mon Monday night and we do make a vote on it uh, because that's when I think what we were planning on. And, and I, I supported the chairman because I, I upheld the chair because I think that we should be waiting and voting on this Monday night. That's what we've told everyone. Those are the promises we've made. And I think we should fall through on it. But back to, 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 to a couple of questions I have. One question I have, and I'm not sure whether it's Eric or Dr. DeCristofaro, has the college paid its retirement for FY21, the current year we're in? I noticed that in the report, it said it's tied up with the auditor. And reading some of those audits, it was a criticism of Quincy. It was in the management letter about mm -hmm. not paying them on time. And it, and I'm a bit concerned. Last year, we took on the uh, health bills. And is this a bill that the city is expected to take on every year? Because that also adds money on to what it almost wipes out what Quincy, Quincy College will be paying in rent. It's, it's like that extra money. All of a sudden, the savings that we've been told are going to happen aren't going to happen. We're just digging ourselves a bigger hole. So I would ask that question. I'm not sure who we would ask that to. I, I think I can uh, answer that, Counselor, and if I'm going uh, away from what your question really was, uh, just make a face or raise your hand and, and I'll, uh, I'll stop. But uh, in, in regards to the pension uh, payments, uh, in FY18, uh, we were invoiced in 2018, uh, in FY18, in February 2018, and we paid that early in June 6, 2018. FY19. Invoiced uh, November of 2018, we paid it in March of 2019. Uh, uh, FY20, invoiced uh, incorrectly uh, for the future year. There was a problem coming over here in the invoice. Um, we received it in February, we paid it in June of 2020. Uh, the invoice and analysis currently is with the auditors for review before it comes out. So when it's invoiced, we pay. Uh, we, we pay it. And, and I think there's a couple of you we paid early. So, um, that may, I hope that answers the question. If not, um, you can uh, come back to me. But when it's invoiced, we pay and, and, uh, and, and sometimes pay uh, early. So I guess that's a commitment that you're going to be paying that when the invoice comes in, and that's not, not another bill we'll be, we'll be receiving. Okay. I wanted, I wanted to get that on record because in what, looking through these reports, I noticed that it wasn't. I checked with the retirement board, and obviously they're telling me that it it had not come in, so I was uh, I wanted to follow up on that um, on that on that question because that makes a big deal on what we're going to do with our budget deliberations and everything like that. And and I'm sorry we have to go through some of this, but I think this is part of our job. We have to ask questions. Some of them are uncomfortable, but we we have to ask them. Uh, and a question I had on the on the we're looking at the draft budget, and I realize it's a draft budget. And I'm looking to go to uh, page 27, and I don't know if I'm looking at it wrong. And I think all of these are questions that need to be asked if we're going to be taking on a financial commitment. Um, operating surplus deficit. And in the line, they're saying a negative 50%. It's, it's from, um, it's a line that's highlighted. And, and I guess it has it up at a negative one, $1,805. It goes down to 301, 147. Are those surpluses or deficits? Uh, Council, first, I appreciate your, your question. All right. And I'm going to hand that over to Martin O'Hearn, um, okay. President of Finance. Martin. Yep, I was just trying to unmute. Thank you, President. 
Uh, thank you, Councillor. Um, yes, the, the, that, that is a three-year look at uh, Quincy College's budget. Um, FY20 was indeed budgeted as a deficit. Um, and the other two that you're seeing on the bottom are surpluses. Correct. Okay, so the reason it's at negative 50 is obviously going back to the problem with FY20. And I'm assuming that's when the nursing program went down. Yeah, the, 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 it was budgeted at a um, deficit of 1.8 million, but actual results um, for um, FY20 were, were just about break even. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Gasparo. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Hearn, for that information. Um, still going through a lot of this information. And, you know, I think well, we are going to be coming back on Monday. I might have a few more questions for them, but at this point, I'll yield the floor, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor, uh, Chair recognizes Councillor Palmucci. Thank you. Uh, two things uh, first. One, uh, whoever's cell phone was going off, if you're going to bother us with your cell phone, you got to get a, a more hip song. Um, also, uh, to Councillor Mahoney uh, and your concern about uh, this thing staying in committee for a long time, um, the council rules allow for any counselor to make a motion to remove a measure from committee based on a majority vote. And if you remember when the last finance chair refused to schedule a committee meeting, a committee hearing on the Kincaid Park flood mitigation project in South Quincy, uh, in a failed attempt to stop that project, an amazing project, we, we, did, we did that thing, I, I believe you voted for it. So there is a mechanism, if you're concerned about a chairperson of any committee bottling something up. The council rules allow you. A no, I understand that. I understand. Okay. That. I just think. I just think the way it's being managed is a little bit um, bizarre. Let's just say okay. that. We all have opinions, but um, mm -hmm. but if you want to pull it out, that's that's. I idea. think that might be the opinion of the general public. <laughs> okay, um, I wanted to talk about the rent issue. I I was trying to follow when um, Councilor Harris was asking questions, and I. And you may have answered it. I apologize. I, um, I, I didn't. I didn't follow I, the first bit. I couldn't. I couldn't hear everything that Doctor Christofaro was saying about the the monies. Um, so, if you don't mind, if you 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 humor me, um, the current rent is two point four million. Right. Okay. And how long is left in that lease? Uh, that, that the the two point four million. Uh, let's see. The, the the length of the lease uh, is 26, if that's what you're talking about. The 2026. Yes, sir. All right. And so there's an escalation, a big escalation that's coming next year. You have uh, FY22 uh, is 2.4 uh, and 2.424. And then 23 will be 2.481. Uh, 2 so um, it, it's considerable. Okay. Um, and if I may kick it over to Mr. Shea, uh, is there a bigger bump coming? I mean, I've heard the number four million thrown around. I don't know what that what that is. I mean, it's I, I don't know. I, I'm just trying to get a sense of one of the things we're being told is that the reason why this has to happen now is because the current situation is untenable, and, and I just want to understand that a little bit more. What's untenable? I, I get the whole culture of the school and it would do better if it had its own built building. I, I get that part of it, but, but I thought there was also a financial argument being made that we should do this because the rent's going to be so high. Is, am I, am I wrong in that? Well, um, if I may, for you, Mr. Chairman, and it's an excellent question, Councillor. So the, the lease that Quincy college has at president's place is actually a string of eight leases. Uh, that has been built out over time. So if you think about it, uh, probably the simplest way to think about it is, is there's, there's leases for first floor A space, first floor B space, third floor, fourth floor. So it, it, is a, it is a, uh, can be a bit of a confusing equation. But when you, when you aggregate them all together, the, we, around 2025, or actually in 2025, the, the college's 
according to their lease, required to notify the president's place if they're going to extend the lease, the leases, and that starts a cascade of extension of leases. Um, you know, the, the simple, and it's a simplified way to describe it, but in 26 fiscal year, the calendar year, academic year 26, 27, they'll, this college will be paying about $2.65 million in rent. And at that point, they will have committed to either staying at Quincy College through adjusted leases. Uh, and we do expect a, that bump to occur, knowing that the per square foot cost in the downtown is, is increasing. So we've laid out the model as we discussed at the last meeting to, to say if a new building were built for the college, uh, if, an, if we move aggressively, it would be available in academic year 25, 26. If we move uh, on a little bit more of a traditional course, it would be available in academic year 26, 27. And if you map the rent that would be paid in 26, 27, Instead of paying rent to related bill, you paid it to pay off debt service. And that's the number that uh, Mr. Mason had quoted, I think, in the, the $67 million range. So it's basically deferring, you deferred rent costs for the college into debt service costs for the college. You're paying for the first $67 million worth of debt service at that time. And Eric, correct me if, I, if I've got that. Incorrect. For the same price, for the same cost. For the same price, that's correct. And is that all they would pay? Uh, that model would need would need to be worked out, um, but we know if they stay in President's Place, that is not all that they would pay. We know that that would right. escalate. So part of the financial model discussion was that giving the city a fixed debt service or the equivalent of that, a yeah. fixed rent. Yeah. stabilizes their financials rather than having them moving towards what might be a step function, completely governed by related deal. We don't have control over that. Got it. Um, but, so that's not a cliff, right? I, I mean, that's not impending doom. It's not. It's a, it's a financial model as to how you could potentially, I would say, better spend, but differently spend the funds. Right. Uh, I mean, I think we'd all agree. Well, I don't know. I agree. Bu buying something is better than renting something. And, and a stable number is better than a fluctuating number. And for, I, mean, I, I would agree with that. But it's, it's not as if there's a, an approaching cliff that's going, that's, that Quincy College is going to fall off related to rent costs. I, I think you answered that. Okay. Um, Rick, uh, Dr. DeCristofaro, sorry. Um, what's the Quincy College Trust? The Quincy College Trust has been around for quite a long period of time, and it's a 503, uh, 503C, is that what you call it? 503C, anyway. Um, so that's where, that's the way um, a lot of funding is raised uh, for the college, primarily for scholarships or for uh, programs uh, like our baccalaureate. You know, they voted to uh, support our baccalaureate program um, for uh, $20,000 to help us uh, get things going. Uh, in, in the fall and then also uh, in the spring. So that's the kind of support uh, that we get from the Quincy College Trust. Okay. And I must admit, I know nothing about the entity and it sounds like I should, um, uh, at least to thank them. But um, how, how, how is that made up? How are people, it, it, so it's a straight up trust. It's, un, it's unaffiliated with the college other than its mission is to help the college. Correct. Okay. All right. All right. Um, There's certain membership, but we do have membership on the on the uh, on both. Okay. Okay. Um, do you hold transcripts for unpaid fees? Um, do we hold? I we do have. Um, yeah, I would suggest that we do. Yes. Okay. I think there's been a, a, a recent movement afoot that um, speaks to the. Uh, to the wisdom of not doing so, and I'm not going to tell you how to run the college. I don't know how to run a car college, but um, about how folks who are, you know, looking for a job, trying to get a job, they can't, they don't have money 
to pay off their college debt because they don't have a job and they can't get the job because they can't pay off the debt to get the transcript, they need to get the job. So it's a, a cycle of poverty that occurs. I would encourage you and the board to consider, you know, may, either making some adjustments, just look at the issue. Um, I, I, I think I read about it in a, in a major national newspaper recently that a lot of colleges were going away from that because of that issue. So I think something to think about. I could counsel the, the, the college sets up so many payment plans uh, with so many students to get them to that place, you know, where they can, they can graduate um, with the, you know, the transcript and then go right into an Okay. Somewhere. So we do work with a lot of students and get them where they need to be. Okay. All right. Um, and I don't know who to talk to about this, but uh, Seville Hall, won't be sold. Can someone tell me why Seville Hall won't be sold? When in doubt, let me turn to Mr. Walker. Why won't Seville Hall be sold, Mr. Walker? Through you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, ultimately, that is like our other city assets. That is a public asset. We have no plans to sell it. There are other uses uh, that we could put that to the college could need that continue to need that space, depending on any programming and space availability via square footage that's in Quincy uh, and any new building. Um, you know, as we talked about a little bit earlier, Councilor, that's a process that would take place after acquisition, uh, determining the exact square footage, the needs, the programming, the expansion of programming and where those programs and facilities would fit. Um, we're not in a position to say at this point that, you know, in exchange for a new building, we would certainly move to sell Seville Hall. Uh, we, we just wouldn't be, it wouldn't be prudent in our minds to say that right now. And that's a city of Quincy asset. We wouldn't owe any remuneration to the college for its acquisition, correct? Can you repeat that, Council? I'm not sure I'm following. We don't have to pay them, right? We don't have to pay them for it. It's our building. We don't have as to pay them. As far as I know, that is a city of Quincy building. Okay. Um, because I think that's one thing they, they've never been allowed or permitted to um, disengage with the city on is the holding of the holding of real estate. It's always been held in the city's name. Uh, okay. I mean, we, we could consider, we could consider splitting up the services available at city hall to two locations and use Seville hall for, for services. We could, um, especially if we're, we need to renovate city hall or uh, similar to what we did. The planning department used to be in, um, in city hall. And now they're at the Coddington building in the fortress. Um, you know, we moved, we moved them over there and we have some other moves coming obviously with the public safety headquarters. So something to think about putting that, putting that building to use to reduce the cost of potential construction or land acquisition in the future. Uh, Dr. DeCristofaro, uh, a lot of what we're talking about in, in the governance and, and um, of the college, and I had referenced earlier that I was on the council when there was a vote by the, I forget what the measure was. I, I looked at it recently, but um, it, we, it was separating. It, it was another step in the separation process. Um, and we were told that it was necessary for the accreditation, for the community college accreditation um, agency, whoever that is. So I'm just, I'm just wondering if you know at this point what, what any potential ramifications are if the city moved one way or another. Because I agree with, I think it was Council uh, Phelan who said um, it's either a department or it isn't, right? And I, I, I'm at that point too. Like either, you know, we're in or we're out of the college business. We either own it, you know, lock, stock, and barrel, or we wash our hands of it, you know, we pay whatever obligations we owe and walk away, let it, let the state um, come in on it. But my question there is obviously we wouldn't take any action or wouldn't want to take any action that lost the school's accreditation one way or another. Um, it makes no sense. So do you know, do you have any sense of what the ramifications of moving one way or another would have on accreditation? I think, I think right now when we work with Nechi, you know, who was one of our regulators and it's like, when we talked with Nechi, um, in the past, I think they were very concerned about uh, being a municipal college. It's, it's very, very unique. So they had the concern. But I think at this point, and people we have talked with, and, you know, when we talk about the college, you talk about not only, you know, the city council and the, and the, 
and uh, our Board of Governors. Um, you know, you also talk about born the registered nurses, you talk about NETCHI, you talk about the Board of Higher Education, Department of Higher Education, talk about DESE, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, uh, as well as the Board of Governors, who I have tremendous, tremendous respect for. And by the way, our budget didn't uh, pass. It was only a finance meeting. I know it was said earlier. So I think right now, um, when we when we are dealing with uh, regulators outside of, of the city, outside of the college, in a sense, um, they look at this as a, a partnership, uh, a partnership that, that, yes, we are the college, we are a department uh, of, of the city. Uh, and yet, I think there's this always this this different times you know have happened over the past sixty something years, you know. Um, but right now, I think they see um, they feel very very strongly that we have a uh, an excellent partnership uh, with the city, and and that does not necessarily mean financially. That that means uh, with with the students uh, in both our high schools uh, and the connectedness that we're working so hard on. Um, and and I think uh, so. I don't think there's a ramification in the sense. I, I think there's probably uh, discussion, um, you know, more than more than anything else. But right now, it's I think it's viewed very strongly as as a partnership of uh, the city um, and the, the college uh, and any of the regulators outside uh, of the city. Okay, so it's 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 fungible to say that it's not a black and white rule that says. X, Y, Z that we'd be crossing. It's more about the overall, I guess, governance and, and ability to for the college to succeed. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Okay. All right. Uh, you, you'd mentioned, I don't know, the, this, on page 142 of the packet that we got, uh, it mentions uh, this um, a fee schedule. Uh, and it mentioned that there was a fee for uh, there was a high school student rate per credit. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know if I have that. Right I'm not going to ask you the amount. It's not. Like it I'm not going to ask you the amount. I'm just asking you what. So, is that a Quincy high school student working through the program that we have that allows high school students to take right. Quincy College classes? Dual enrollment. Dual enrollment. Dual enrollment. Right. Um, and. Uh, Who's paying that? Is a student paying that out of pocket? Family pays um, $200 uh, for the for a three credit course, which is uh, quite a, uh, a really great deal. So that that's that. That's the uh, rate. And does the school department pay the remainder? No, um, we, we do it to promote uh, to promote the college so that we do it to promote the college. We do it to. Uh, and then, you know, possibly increase our enrollment, but it's a service to uh, the students and the families of, of uh, North Quincy High School and Quincy High School uh, students. So that's really what it is. I mean, if there's a if there's a difference or uh, the variation uh, would be that we're, we're the ones uh, picking up uh, the deficit uh, per credit on that or per course. Okay. So on this um the fiscal year 2021 tuition and fees so it says the high school student rate is 151 dollars per credit the non-us resident student fee is 195 dollars per credit the the writing's really small here uh oh i see and then the quincy north quincy high school student rate is 270 per course okay so um I apologize that I don't recall. I don't recall the um, the name of it. But when a student has special needs, uh, you know, law requires that the, the municipality meet those needs. Um, what what is it? What is it called? It's a what is the plan called? Um, I, I, is it IEP? Is it an individual educational plan? IEP. Okay, so an IEP. So. Um, so we have IEPs for students who have special needs, um, usually due to a disability, physical, mental, something like that, um, or similarly related issues. There's no process for IEPs for um, gifted students, right? They wouldn't fall into an IEP if, they're, if they have needs that the public school can't meet because they're on the other, other end of the spectrum. 
in terms of um, ability to interact and engage the curriculum, right? Yeah, and I, and I think that there are accommodations uh, that we have here that may not be, you know, uh, part of the, the whole 94, 142 of the special education laws. When students come in and have special needs like that or accommodations that they need, you know, they meet with our student life representatives, student development representatives, and we develop a plan for them. And that means the communication first to, you know, to them and with them, uh, as well as the, the instructors. Uh, that they I, I appreciate that. Not the direction I was heading in. What I'm getting at is, um, I guess what I'm getting at is, is about the, more about the dual enrollment program um, between the Quincy Public Schools and the college and that relationship. Uh, and I'm just wondering, so we're making the families pay a couple hundred bucks. Uh, I would imagine that there's some sort of discount available if a family can't afford that $270 for the course. It's like a low-income family with a, with a gifted or talented child who it, it can do college level work at in high school is that what i get right in that that's right, that's right. okay um in the dual enrollment program you know what I, I i'm going a little far afield with what we're talking about tonight i'm i'll circle back with you at another time or, or one-on-one uh, to ask some questions about this but it, it's a topic i'm interested in because i do i like the i like the idea of the dual enrollment program um and back to what i said at the beginning i do really believe that Quincy College can be incorporated or should be incorporated more into, um, you know, the educational lifespan of a, of a student in Quincy, right? Whether it's job training, you know, like a, the nurses program, getting into a, to an occupational training or um, making the curriculum uh, available to younger students who may be at an intellectual level where they can participate in that. And I think, I don't know, one of the other days, one of the other meetings, you, you or someone else had said that studies, or someone told me recently, studies show that even children who are underperforming, who aren't gifted and talented, who are underperforming at the high school level, can um, attain great success, improvement by engaging into college curriculum classes. So I I want to explore that a little bit more, but it's probably not. I mean, if I was if I was Council Mahoney, McCarthy would have cut my microphone off 20 minutes ago. But uh, <laughs> I don't know who I'm insulting. That. I think I'm insulting both of them. But, so I'm going to stop. Uh, those are all the questions I have for now. Do you mind if I talk just a wee bit about that? Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I want to take the, the uh, really the opportunity to, to share you know that connection, the connections that we have. Uh, with our high school, both high schools. I mean, it really begins with um, career pathways. I mean, we have we have pathways for uh, our students in, in career and in, in, uh, tech education. Uh, we have pathways in regard to they can get college credit, early early uh, education and care. Um, uh, let's see, there's there are two other. Uh, I have them right here. I'm sorry, but we have these pathways that are are really no cost to the students that they can get these credits. Um, so that, that's a good, we have career pathways, that's the foundation. Then you have the dual enrollment. Dual enrollment is for these, these honor, low income, honor, honor students. So you have the honor students, plus you have these career pathways as well. And then to, to really piggyback on that, like we, what I think I mentioned this at the April 26th meeting, um, was that now we have um, early college high school. <clears throat> so we work with State Street Foundation, and we get over five hundred thousand uh, dollar grants from them. Uh, and and this, the the really great thing about that is that they are paying for advisors and guidance counselors, new, brand new, to come into the school to you to really work with a very small cohort of students. You know, it could be one hundred and fifty to two hundred uh, at each high school. Uh, so they'll have a guidance council, they'll have an advisor that's going to meet with them as a cohort. Uh, and these kids are high needs, these kids are EL, these kids are special education, uh, they're low income, they're first generation. Tremendous program from college you know, to the high school, but they will run the program. The benefit is that these students can almost get one year of college under their belt before they leave Quincy or North Quincy High School. Tremendous benefit. So you have the foundation of career pathways, no, in, no cost, uh, paid for primarily through dual enrollment, through a Perkins grant. Then you have the dual enrollment that is a cost, but we do take, you know, if certain students cannot pay, we do have either a payment plan or we just say, hey, you know what, 
We're going to guide you through this. That's what this college is all about. I know you know that and you've spoken to that and I appreciate that. So you have these three and now you also, now you have associate three, but you also have the baccalaureate program that we're starting. You know, so you have the business baccalaureate. So they can really have a vision. And what our vision is, is not only to start with grade 10, 11, 12, but bring it down to ninth grade and then bring it down to middle school to have these kids really understand that there's a light at the end of the tunnel for all of these kids in Quincy. And so those programs, I think, are key, not only to some revenue, you know, the revenue projections, but also uh, with helping so many families uh, in the city of Quincy that may not be able to afford uh, a college, a four-year school to go to, or may not be ready. So I, I think it's a tremendous thing, and I'm, I'm kind of glad you asked uh, that question, Councillor. And anytime we can talk, you know that. Anytime. Yeah, no, and I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's it's a subject I, I heard up. Uh, uh, actually, I think it was school committee member Courtney Perdios was was talking about it recently, and it, it piqued my interest because because it comes right around the time that we're having this discussion. And uh, you know, for the record, if I haven't said it, the the inner out in the inner out debate on you know whether the city should be in the college business or not. Um, I, I I come down on the inside. Like I I think the city should one hundred percent embrace the college, bring it in, and have direct oversight over, over it. It's similar to and this is just my thought, but similar to what the school how the school departments run. It has a superintendent. It has an elected school committee. It should be a board of governors who oversees the the, the policies and the day to day, but ultimately the financial stuff goes through the mayor and the city council. It's in a budget. There's a presentation every year. And there's, um, you know, we take on, we talk, we take on everything and there's a budget for it. Right. So, and then I think with that comes a tremendous amount of opportunity, um, f- you know, j- job training for, 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 for Quincy residents, you know, free tuition, things like that. And I, and I think that's, like I said before, uh, this stuff only works if the residents feel a benefit for it, because they should get a benefit. It's their money, you know, it's their community. Um, they got to get a benefit from it. So, and I think we could do a better job uh, working together, the city and the college with making sure that folks, Quincy residents get that benefit. So um, thank you very much, uh, Dr. DeCristofaro. Thank you, Chairman McCarthy. Thank you, Councilor. Um, any other councilors? Okay. Uh, oh, Councillor DeBona, go right ahead. Thank you, Ms. Um, Chairman McCarthy. Um, since I've been up here for the six years, this is going to go down as the second most intense meeting. Um, just deliberating with the with the people, with with the other councillors. Um, what was the first? You can't say that without telling us what the first. I'm not going to tell you the first. I'm not going to get. Okay. The first. okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just got thinking a little bit of here about what everybody's talking about here. So, and I, I talked a lot about the building, the structure and how it's going to be built and all. I, I'm almost a step further. So if it got approved, what makes it where Quincy College can go into this building? Because this this is just the acquisition and the initial design uh, services. This is the 23 million to kickstart it. You know, just reading what other towns do on uh, prop two and a half and like uh, funding for certain schools like Braintree next door to us. Um, Weymouth with the Chapman school is they put it on as a ballot question. They basically say, okay, we'll see how this really works. Okay. Whether this goes up or down when you have to get the amount of signatures to do this is put it on the ballot. Let the voters vote on whether there should be a Quincy college in the city of Quincy and should it be in the Moreau building? I mean, that's to take it a whole step to another level. Um, a lot of other municipalities, a lot of smaller towns, they do that. Whether they have town meeting or whether they put it on the ballot and they say, okay, we'll put it in the control of the voters. And you make a decision based on what the voters are, whether it be binding or non-binding. And you can go to that level if you get the amount of signatures. Like whether this is a yes or a no on Monday, whether you because this is a super majority, this has to be six votes. Whether it's a yes, if it's a yes and Sometimes maybe the voters or the people might not think it is. You, you get it on the ballot. And not, you have to get the amount of signatures. You got to obviously get them verified. But I think this particular situation, you put it in the hands of the voters. If, if they vote on it, it's a binding question um, to have a Quincy College in the downtown. You have it. And then if they don't, hey, the voters voted, voted yes or no. And you have to go with that. So it's just a suggestion. 
I don't know where the votes are on this tonight. I mean, uh, for Monday night, it's a super majority. It's got to be six votes. But if you're hinging, if a counselor is hinging on whether they want to go, which myself, I'm one of the hinging votes. I, I don't know where I am on this. And um, there's still, we still have, if this gets approved, we the, 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 the administration has to come back to us for the hundred million build out of the building. Um, and when we talked about more time, uh, Council Palmucci talked about, okay, get, you know, he came in with the amendment of getting the acquisition, getting this kind of, I, I don't disagree with him. I think that might be the right thing to do. I didn't vote on it tonight because I didn't have enough information, but that might not be a bad, a bad idea. Get the acquisition. And then if you get enough signatures, put on the ballot. And in this particular election, you let the voters make a decision on whether they want it there or not. And that, and therefore, the yay or the nay, or whether you're in tune with this or not, it doesn't matter. It's up to the voters that make the decision on that. And I, I am leaning towards that dis, that decision. Like, hey, listen, you know what? Put it in the hands of them, and let everybody have a, um, a let everybody have a voice on that. You know, um, so. <laughs> I don't know. It's something to consider. Um, I don't know where my colleagues are on this vote. I know that um, that I don't know where I am, and I don't know where more dis more things that can happen up until Monday. But I'm just thinking a little bit outside the box. So, with that, um, Mr. Chairman, um, I've listened to everybody tonight. I'm trying to make solutions. I'm trying to have a solution to the madness. I'm trying to make suggestions, whether it whether we act on it or whether what transpires is up to us, but as a body, um, you know, I see it from all different angles here tonight. And um, I just don't have enough information yet to make a decision on, on this. And hopefully I can get some answers and talk to some more residents about where they are on this. Um, but thank you. Thank you, yes. Councillor. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to wrap this up with just a couple of comments. I, I know early on Councillor Kane and I, you know, went, um, went off on each other a little bit uh, on the um, changes that Councilor Palmucci put in. Um, and um, that's a good thing. Um, it, uh, we understand where everybody's coming from, I think, here tonight. One of the things that I tried to convey, and maybe uh, it wasn't clear, is that this college has never had a home that was adequate. Never. Coddington, by the time it it started to roll in Coddington, as Councilor Kane mentioned, technology, it changes by the hour. And it left Coddington behind. So we went to State Street. We went to the Patriot Ledger building. And now at the WWE. Presidential Plaza. Um, it's just never had a home. We built Seville, which was the modern building. And um, it's done a nice job. But again, it doesn't have a home. When Quincy High was being built, everyone ran down the street to North Quincy High. And when North, when Quincy High was done and the brand new building was back, everyone came pouring back. And I think the facility does matter when kids and families are making decisions and that's why they go on college visits to look at the facility and see what they can get. And we have a jewel for a two year program. And I know I've had conversations with the president about strengthening our feeder system to places like Maritime, Curry, UMass, Boston, et cetera. So, my biggest thing here is they have been nomads. They've been pushed around. They had to deal with facilities that probably were at the beginning inadequate and they worked hard to, to get them up to speed, to get them where they are. There's been some bumps in the road, the nursing program, of course, and then the last year and a half. Um, but I see people that would want to come back to a facility that, um, 
would be a destination in Quincy Center. It would help us um, more than it does now economically. And I think folks would come back. I don't think folks want to hide behind their computer screen online for the rest of their lives. So um, that's where I'm coming from in regards to a facility. I want to give them something that they will succeed in and not as Mr. Shea and Mr. Mason, and I'm going to talk to them a little bit more tomorrow um, about rent versus ownership, about what's being paid out. And, you know, a good question by Councillor Harris is in 2026, I think, or 2027, whatever the deadline is, what happens if they have to get out a presidential plaza? Where do they go? Where do we go? We, we just turn our backs on Quincy College. So um, <clears throat> I know there's some information, and I'll get with Miss um, Manning to go over some of the questions to add to the information. I ask everybody to get a good hard look at it the next few days, and Monday night we'll talk again at 6 o'clock. So with that, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Uh, and um, everyone have a great night and thank you very much. Motion to adjourn.